Recently, I have been deep diving into creating a store admin dashboard using Next.js. So I wanted to create a robust application where I could sell video games out of, and I thought a store admin dashboard would be perfect way of learning how to do this. So on the back end, I'm using the AWS stack, I'm using GraphQL, I'm creating a lot of different queries, I'm using different relationships from one to many. I think this is a pretty involved app. I'll put a link in the description if you wanna follow along with the code, but I think you'll learn something throughout this. It was a fun project to work on, check it out. So let's have a quick tour of the app. So this is the application. It's essentially a store dashboard. It's protected by an authenticated route. So authorized and logged in users can use it. You can see here, as soon as you log in, you get a list of products. We can also sign out if we need to. From here, I have a list of genres. For example, science fiction, puzzle and action. I can add my own genres in if I need to by clicking the add genre. And then these forms are automatically generated for us by Amplify Studio and the form builder. I can also add in platforms if I need to. So let's go ahead and add a product in here. And we'll assume, let's say this is a video game store. So I'm gonna add in the Rose game. I'm gonna put a price in, I don't know, 32.99. I'm gonna click browse files here. So this is automatically connected to an S3 storage bucket. And I'm gonna choose my file, Rose JPEG and it's gonna go ahead and automatically upload it. And then for platform ID, I can choose one of the platforms I've already created. We'll do special console five. For genre ID, I'll choose, I don't know, let's say this is a puzzle game and I'll click add. And this looks okay, I'll click submit. And this will redirect to our list of products. And you can see our first product here is the Rose game and it was added in today. So we're gonna be creating this dashboard, this admin dashboard, so you can add products through this video. So we'll use Next.js. We'll obviously we'll use AWS Amplify Studio and we'll, I'll walk you step-by-step -step through it. So let's begin. So let's begin and let's set up the backend and our GraphQL app sync database without data store turned on using the AWS console. So log into the AWS console if you haven't already, you can click the link in the description. It'll have a link to get a free AWS account using our free tier. So we'll go ahead and choose AWS Amplify from the list, or you can search for AWS Amplify at the top. Now I have a few apps in here already. If you don't have any, you might see something called create new app, but I'm just gonna do a new app here, build an app, and I'm gonna give it a name. I'm gonna call it Studio GraphQL, and then I'm gonna click confirm deployment. And this will start creating the backend environment for us and provisioning everything we need to use AWS Amplify Studio. Okay, so went in and provision everything. I'm gonna click Launch Studio, and this will open up Studio. Now to begin, this is the graphical interface to create our backend. And what I first wanna do is add in authentication. And this will allow us to have this be in an admin dashboard so only logged in users can go inside here and add new products to our dashboard that we're going to create. I have a few options. I'm gonna leave it at the default so users will have to log in with an email address and I'll just click deploy here. All right, so our back end has been provisioned. So what this did is it created a Cognito identity management system in the back end with a user pool for our account and now when users log in, it can be managed through that. Uh, it gives us this pull command here. We'll get that later when we're ready, but we'll let's go ahead and move on and add in our data. So now let's go ahead and create the data models. These are gonna be the models that are going to have our product information, our genres and platforms inside of it that we can access from our front end. Now, uh, this is actually backed by our managed GraphQL service called AppSync. And something new that we just released recently is something called uh, Studio Support for all GraphQL APIs without Data Store. And so in the past, you actually had to use Data Store, which was great if you're doing things like, for example, here, if you had conflict resolution and offline capabilities, this used to default to be enabled. So if you're doing some offline capabilities, this was great but a lot of uh, our users don't use that capability. So now it's defaulted to off and then you can get all the power of just using GraphQL and subscriptions. So that's what I'm gonna show you how it works today. 
Now uh, I'm gonna create three different models. The first one is gonna be called product. And in this product one, I'm gonna add in a few fields. I'm gonna have a name. So the name of the product I'm gonna have is, is sold, which you can have different types in here, scalar types. We have strings, ints, floats. I'm just gonna have this is sold as be a Boolean. And then I'm gonna have a price, which I'm just gonna leave it as a float. And then I'm gonna have an image, and this image is gonna be a string. And this is where we're gonna hold the key for the uh, image that we upload to S3. Now we need a couple of other ones in here. So we're gonna add in a genre, and this is just gonna have a name and a value. And we'll assume the value is a shortened version of the name that we might be able to use in a couple different places. I'll show you later. And then we're gonna add in a platform. So this will be like what sort of game platform you're on. Uh, we'll create a few of those. And we'll have one called name here and also a value. So one thing we wanna to try to do is add in some relationships. So we know we have a platform here and we want a platform relationship here that has a one to many. So a platform can be on multiple different, uh, different products and a product will only have one platform. So we'll save there and it'll add this relationship, this cardinality rule. And we'll do the same thing for genre. So I'm gonna have a product here. So it has one genre, can be on multiple different products. We'll save it there. So now it added in all the relationships that we want and we should be able to go ahead and deploy it. And you can look at the GraphQL schema. You can also edit this directly when we get into the code if we decide to change anything, but we'll leave it a default also just for the sake of this demo, I'm leaving these as public, but if you like to, when you're following along, you can change that to private. You can add different authorization rules. So only certain people can edit, update, and delete, but I'll just leave it as default. I'm gonna click save and deploy, and this should go ahead and create it. Okay, so it went ahead and created the data models for us, and this is backed by our app sync, and it has DynamoDB in the background as well. We can take a look at that, but we have a couple more things we need to do is we need somewhere to host our files. So we're gonna click on this file storage and add in some file storage. And so we'll make it sure that, so sign in users can upload, view, and delete. We'll have guest users view, and we'll go ahead and create a bu bucket here. And this will go ahead and create an S3 bucket in the back end. All right, so our storage is added. So now I'm gonna click on UI library, and this is a very unique feature of Studio and it allows you to use forms to add to your front end application. So we basically take your data models and create forms out of them. So you can see here, it created a couple of forms for us. We have this generate, create form, update form, this platform create form and update form. So we want a couple of more. So what we wanna do, since we're using relationships, we have to enable that. So we need to go to UI library settings and we're gonna just uh, turn it on and then we're gonna click save changes. And now you can see a couple of new forms have popped up. We have this product create form. And from here, we have a couple of, of buttons here, add item and genre I, uh, ID. And so this allows us to create a product. And then from that product, we can select different platforms and genres so we can connect it all together, which will be really handy for us in the future. Another couple of features that I really like is this file browse. So now when we upload images, we can look through this file browser. This is the S3 bucket that we have and we can delete or update it. We can also go to user management here. So once we start creating users, I can edit or delete users or or, or a few other options in here. I can even create users. And then in this content, this is what's going to happen after we start adding content in. We can also manually add content in. I can auto generate some bogus data if I wanted to, and I can choose between the platform, genre, and product. Now this is backed by a managed uh, GraphQL service. So I can actually click here, test GraphQL API, and I could run queries myself just directly from in he from here if I need to. Obviously there's nothing in here, but if I wanted to, I could I could do that. Now this get platform ID would require me to enter in an ID, but there's a, a whole bunch of queries that were already auto-generated for us. Uh, we didn't have to create the resolvers for anything for this, they're already there. 
So like list platforms, I can add items. And then from items, I can add names. So if I had anything in here, it would show up. And this is really handy once I start jumping into the GraphQL and, and writing queries itself. So this is everything with Studio that we're gonna look at right now. I think what the best bet right now is to jump into the code. We're gonna jump into our next 13 app. We're gonna come back to the Studio to see what we've uploaded in, in a little bit, but let's just jump into the code. So I have the terminal open here and I'm assuming you already have Node installed. I'm gonna do npx create next app at latest, and then I'm gonna call it my Studio app. And it's just asking me a few questions. I'm gonna do TypeScript, yes. I'm gonna leave tail, Tailwind on in this one. I'm gonna leave the source folder. Now for the app router, just for the sake of simplicity, I'm gonna turn it off for this. You can certainly use the app router in the future, but uh, I'm just gonna leave it off for right now. So I'm gonna choose no. And then I'm just going to leave all the defaults and it'll go ahead and create the next app for me. Okay, so I'm gonna change directories to the Studio app. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up here. And before I get too far, I'm gonna install a few dependencies. First, I need to make sure that I have the Amplify CLI installed. So that's npm i at aws-amplify CLI tag g, and I'll go ahead and install that. I'll also install a few libraries. I'm gonna install AWS Amplify UI React and the AWS Amplify library inside here. And then also I'm gonna install the AWS Amplify UI React storage. And so the UI React library is for UI components. The AWS Amplifier is our JavaScript library and the AWS Amplify UI React storage is for our storage components. Great, so everything is installed. Now I need to pull down the information from the Studio backend that we created right now. So I'm going to go to this other screen here and inside here, I'm gonna click this little button here and this will give me the amplify pull command. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this into my terminal. And then it'll ask me some questions and it'll set everything up for me. So it's gonna reopen up a URL here. Essentially, you'll, you'll need to be made sure, make sure that you're logged into the AWS console into Studio. I'm just gonna click yes here. So I'll authenticate. Then I'll choose Visual Studio Code, JavaScript, React. I'm just gonna hit enter through all these. And this will install and pull everything down into our app. Now uh, it's done installing, uh, pulling everything down, but it gives us this little bit of a warning here that we need to run this command, amplify update cogen. So one really nice feature of Amplify is that all those GraphQL queries I showed you earlier, we could code gen them all so that we don't have to write them all by uh, we will write them all by memory or by copy and pasting them. And it also generates some TypeScript files that'll be really handy for us. So let's run that amplify update code gen. And then I'm gonna choose TypeScript and I'm just gonna hit enter where it says maximum depth here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and choose three. This is because we're using relationships. So I'm just hit enter there. And now it went ahead and created a few files for us. So if we look back in here, there's a couple of things new. So we have this Amplify folder. This was created as soon as we did the pull in the application. We also have this backend uh, folder that has all information about our AppSync backend, which is the schema that we created. You can see right here. Uh, and then it also has information about Cognito, our storage, everything else. And then in our source folder, we have this new file called AWS exports. And that's the file that has all our information about where everything's located at, where all these backend resources are at. And then we also have this API TS file. This was created when we ran that Amplify uh, update cogen and then Amplify cogen. So this has all the typings that we want. And then we have this GraphQL that has these mutation queries and subscriptions that we'll need to use later, which will be make it much simpler to talk to our, our GraphQL backend. Since we did that now, we wanna have these, these models, so we or these forms that we created here. So if you remember, we went to this UI library, we have all these forms. We want these to show up in here. And to do that, we just need to run this command amplify pull. 
And this will automatically now, since we co-gen all those GraphQL interfaces, it'll detect that and it'll create all the models uh, and forms for us and it'll add it to our application. And this basically only works in React, by the way. All right, we have everything installed. Don't worry about this warning. It's just saying that uh, you need to use 4.6, but version 5.0, the later versions work fine on this. So if we look back at our Explorer here, we now have this UI components folder, which will have all those forms for us. So we don't have to create all these, which will save us a lot of time, which is great. Now that we have our app running, I want to see if I can add authentication. So we're going to wrap the whole application up so that a user has to log in before accessing anything. And we're going to go in this app TSX file and we're going to do it this way. So I'm going to import in, first we'd have to do a little bit of configuration. We're going to import in Amplify from AWS Amplify, from AWS Amplify. And then we're import in that AWS exports file and it has a default export. So I should be able to do this from, and then we know this AWS exports right here. And then we can run this command amplify configure, pass it in. And then we also want to have the styles uh, that we're going to be using. So I'm going to add in this UI react here, and this will be styles.css. And this will add all the global styles that we need. Another really handy feature since we're going to add in authentication is we have this with authenticator and let me show you how that works. So I'm going to put this down here. I'm going to import in another import. It's going to be, it's going to be with authenticator. And this is going to be pulled from AWS Amplify UI React. And I'm going to do a little change here and still this export default. We're going to do a function app here and then I'm going to do export default app. So basically the same thing we had before, but now I'm going to surround the whole application by this with authenticator. This is a high level, uh, high level component that takes another component in as an argument here. And now the whole application will be secure. And let's see if we, what happens when we run it. An NPM run dev, we're going to open up 3000. All right, so it gives us this interface here to create a login or sign in. If this was an admin account, I'd probably, there's a way to hide this create account so users can't create accounts. But we'll just assume that this is the first time you're setting it up and you can remove this tab later. So let me go ahead and create an account. It's gonna ask me a code, I'm gonna enter that in. It's emailed to me. All right, so now I'm logged in. Now I wanna actually add a log, a log out button. So let's go into the index file here and we'll go ahead and do a little cleanup. I'm gonna add in a heading here. It's gonna be hello world. And this heading is actually from our UI component library, this UI react. And we'll have to add a level, which we'll do one. Now, if you look at that, it looks okay, but I wanna do a little bit of change to it. Uh, I'm gonna go into the CSS global file and I'm just gonna delete everything here. Great, so let's go ahead and add a logout button. I'm just like you, I don't rememorize every single thing here. So I'm gonna go to the UI docs and look at an example and copy it. So I'm gonna go here. I'm going to go to connected components, authenticator, and it gives you an example right here where you can, uh, actually it's inside this advanced usage and it said something called use authenticator hook. And from here I can grab a sign out button. It's pretty common. So right here I have a user and a sign out. I'm just going to copy and paste it in here. I have to import in this use authenticator. And then in this return statement, I'm just going to, for now, I think I'm going to add in a fragment and then I'll add in a button, which is another UI primitive. This is all from the AWS UI uh, react library. So I'm gonna import that in, and then I'm gonna add in an on click. And this is going to run the sign out, and I'll just call this sign out. And I can add a variation to it, and this kind of adds in a little bit of color. So uh, I think I can do destructive link, I'll just do primary. Save it. Let's take a look at what we have now. So cool, we have a hello world and sign out. Uh, I don't like how it's kind of right there. I'm gonna add a flex in here. 
this is basically add is adding a CSS flex, but I can do, if I can spell it right, I can add a few things in here. These are props. They're kind of like style props that we could add into any of these UI component components that we already have from our library. So I'm going to do justify content. I don't know, center, only line items, center, and then I'll do direction. I'll do column, column. I'll add it all in there. Okay, so now I have it in the middle. I also have an extra semicolon. Okay, so I'm getting somewhere. If I click the sign out button, it's back to sign out. I can now try to log in again. All right, so I was able to log in and log out. So let's take a look at adding in some routes and then we'll add in some of these forms. Let's take a look at the layout. So for the sake of time, I went ahead and created a components folder under the source folder here. And in, inside the components folder, I created something called layout. And this is what's going to surround our whole application. It's also going to provide each route that we're gonna add in. So uh, I went ahead and add all this code in, let me explain it. So this is the layout component. It's going to have the children that we're going to be using that will be essentially right at the bottom. And then I created this routes array and each route has a href, a label and active. And the idea behind this is that as we add more routes, I'll just go ahead and add another object with each route I wanna add in. Then I'm using this flex, which is that UI component that I showed you earlier uh, that I can add in direction. It's basically adding a CSS flex property. I'm kind of aligning it. I'm adding some margin and bottom. Now, if you remember when I created this app, I added in uh, Tailwind. And just for the sake of simplicity, I added in these Tailwind classes. You could do something similar with the UI components amplify library, but I thought just for the sake of fun, we'll just go ahead and use it this way. So this is just using flex. You can see your outline item center. There's a little bit of spacing here for different screen sizes. And then we have this route. So I'm just incrementing through all the different routes or mapping through all the routes, looping through them. I'm adding in the link, which is a part of Re React, the next library. And I'm passing the key, which will either, which will be this key right here will be the href, which will be the URL. I'm gonna have the label and then the path name. And those all get passed in here. And then I'm just doing a little bit of quick class name changes. If the user is active or not, I'm gonna have the, if they're on the same route, it's going to have a blacker text a black text here. And then I uh, added in a button here that all it does is maybe in a future video, we'll make it connected so that way we can use this button to log out. But this is like a profile. Right now all it shows is A, and then we have a divider at the bottom. And that, you know, once again, this is all from the UI React library. So let's see if we can add that to this new layout to our app. And so I'm gonna import it in. I'm gonna import in a layout from slash components, the new folder I created, layout. And then I just wanna surround the whole application by this. So uh, we'll just go like this and then we'll do layout and we'll save it here. And we have one extra thing here. There we go. Uh, and we'll refresh it. And it kinda looks a little off. So let's add some padding. So I'm gonna go into the global file, CSS file. I'm just going to add a padding of one rem to make it look a little nicer. Okay, great. So now here's my overview. This is the main route. I only have one route so far and I have the A here. So when I have, when I get farther in, we'll add in routes for our params and our, for our platforms and our genres and to create a product. And we'll do that in a moment. So in our pages, our source folder on our pages, each one of these will be different routes. I'm gonna create a few new folders. So uh, we're going to have a folder for genres, and then I'm just gonna create a new folder for platforms, and then one for products. And we wanna be able to add all these different things in. So for genres, I'm gonna create two files here. I'm gonna create an index file and then uh, I'm gonna create a new file too. And for now, we just wanna make sure these work. So I'm gonna export default 
genre and we return just a heading of hello world function genre and we'll import this in and we'll have a level and this will equal one and we'll just make sure and this actually has to be like this one and we'll do instead of this we'll say hello world genre and let's add into the new we'll just paste it in here we'll call genre new here and we'll go hello from genre new and I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste this into the platforms and products so we have something very similar so this will just take a second okay so I went ahead and added all those in I also made this plural genres so now I have platforms and products and let's see if we can get those to show up in our heading at the top so I'm gonna go and open up that layout again and we need to add in a few things. So the first one, we know it's going to be slash genres. And the label will have it called genres. And we'll have active if the path name equally equals slash genres. So let me add those for the other three real quick. All right, so I have all of them added in for genres, platforms, and products. So we come here, click genres, hello world genre, Hello World Platform, Hello World Products. Great. So now we have these three routes. Now we're going to have some new routes, but I think what we're going to do is when we click on genre, it should show a table of all the genres and then also have a big button that says add new genre. So we'll do that next. Okay, so I added some updates to our genres code here and I'll walk you through it. So what I have here is now I added this user router and this genre is now I'm using this router so we can add a button. And so essentially all we did is create a button that says add genre. I'm having this on click handler. So since press it, it pushes it to the genres new route that we just created. And then once again, I had this flex and I've just added in a, a couple of different CSS to make it justify content, add some gaps, some width, some padding, make it color white, just to make it look a little nicer. Uh, so let's see what that looks like. So if we come back here, now I have this add genre button. If we click on it, it goes to hello world genre new. And so I think I'm gonna have the same thing for platforms. Yeah, let us let me go ahead and add that in real quick. All right, so here is platforms and it looks exactly the same. We have this flex wrapper, we have this heading, we have this button, and now it goes into platforms new. And if we come here, we, have, we can click add genre and it goes to new, perfect. So we're getting closer. You're probably thinking too, this platforms and this genres are so the same, aren't, shouldn't we, you know, dry principle and refactor this into its own component. You certainly can. We're gonna be adding in some more features to this later, but just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just gonna leave this two different files. But if you are following along or coding along, feel free to refactor this into one uh, genre platform component that you can use instead of having a lot of duplicated code here. So let's see if we can add in something for the genre. So when we click add genre, we can add a new genre. And this is what's gonna save us a lot of time since we're using Amplify Studio and we were able to use the forms. So I'm gonna go into the new file for genres. So it should be this one right here. And right now all I have is hello world genre new. So I'm gonna change this text to say create new genre. And then I'm going to surround this whole application. I'm just going to add some more JSX here. So uh, I think what we want to do, I'm gonna use a fragment here for now. And I wanna add in a flex. And then inside this flex here, we'll make sure we import that in. We'll do a justify content and that'll be center. And now we have something called a genre create form. So remember we generated a bunch of forms in this UI components. So we have one called generate create form. So let's see, we can add that in. We're gonna do genre or genre create form, excuse me. And it automatically imported in from that UI components genre create form. And then in here, uh, I can add in a few props. So I'm just gonna make it look a little nicer. 
and we're gonna have an on success and it's going to soon as we have it done it's going to push here so i'm going to add this router from next router and what you can see this genre create form we can do a lot of customization on it it has all these on changes so if there's an error submit validate we can listen to those different events and do different things so the on success one will trigger when we submit the form correctly we can also do overrides if we wanted to there's a, a way to override different parts of the form itself if we wanted to override the heading uh, things like that but we'll just leave it like this for now and let's take a look at it see what it looks like so out of the box it looks pretty good now it does have this products here so i think this is a nice flexibility if we want to add a genre and add it to a product right away we can or add it to multiple products but let's uh so but this is good let's go and add one in so we'll add a genre action we'll call act we're not going to associate it with the products right now we can do that later we can click submit and this goes back to the genres. So next thing we need to do is make sure that we can see the, the actual genre we added. And we're going to use GraphQL and a table to do that. So first I want to do is create some types. And I'm going to use this for a table. So I created this one called table values. Now we have this thing called genre. And here's the types that were automatically generated for us when we ran in the Amplify code gen. And if you look at this genre right here, right here, it has an ID, name, value, products. And then we look at the product type, or excuse me, the platform type right here. You can see it's very similar. Actually, it's almost exactly the same. So I think I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the same genre and platform type for one table. And then I'm gonna use a table in both the genres and platforms to display all the data it's in. And so I'm gonna create this table genre from this API, I'm going to grab the genre out of here, and then I'm going to use this pick, which is a TypeScript way of just grabbing certain values out of genre. So I just won't care about the name value and create it at. So now I have this new table values that I'll be using here. Second thing I want to do is in the components folder, I created this new items table component. And now let me show you what that looks like. So this, all of the purpose of this component is, is to display a table with values in it. And it takes the table name and it takes some data, which is that table values that we just created. And it's an array. And what I'm doing here is I have this table. So I'm using the table and table head, table row, table cell from the UI React library, for the Amplify library, adding some columns for the name, value, and date. And then I'm assuming that the value that comes out of here, this table data, let's take a look at the data here. We have a data, we know that's an array, and we have these three things, created at, name, and value. So we're just gonna do a simple data.map. We're gonna assume the key is the key here, and then we're gonna use aitem.natum name and value, and then I'm using this JavaScript international date time format to take the date and just display it in the way I want to. That's all we need to do for this data table. And now since we have this data table, uh, what we need to do is go back into our genres page and we need to display it here. So probably what we'll need to do, and this is the hello world. So let's go to the genres, this one right here. Uh, right now it says just genres and there's an add genres button. So what I'm gonna do is right underneath this flex, I think, we can try it right here, but we might put it under, I don't know. We need to add this table in, but first we need to grab the data from that table so we can use it. So let, let's, uh, I'm gonna live code this. So we're gonna put in a genre, we're gonna set the genre. We need to say old fashioned use state here. I'll make sure I import it in. And then for the type of this, we're gonna use that table values that we created before, not a great name but it's fine. Then we need to add a use effect. And the idea is as soon as this component loads, we want to grab the data for this, for the genres out of the API for GraphQL. And I'm gonna do a couple of imports to make this a little easier. I'm gonna import in star as queries from that queries, that GraphQL, These, this is uh, what's created for us. 
I'm also going to import in this graph QL, I think it's called query from uh, AWS Amplify, Amplify API. And this is just a special type that we're gonna be using. I think it's called GraphQL query. Let me see here, GraphQL query, this one right here. And I need to list some data. So I'm gonna get this list of genres query from API. Uh, yeah, let, let's see how this works. So inside this use effect here, I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna create a function. I'm gonna create an async function. I'm just gonna call it grab genres. And inside here, we're going to grab all genres. And we're gonna use our API. So we have API. Now, I haven't added this in yet, so I can import it in. This is AWS Amplify, and this is essentially the way you want to interact with GraphQL APIs with AWS, AWS uh, Amplify. So I'm gonna API right here, and I'm gonna do the GraphQL. And then I love types, so let's put in the right types here. First, we have to set it to a, a GraphQL query. But then we need to actually put what that query is, and we're gonna use that list genres query that we just saw. And now inside here, we have a few things we can do. We can pass in a query, auth mode, auth tokens, and variables. We're just gonna pass in the query, and we're gonna put in queries dot list genres. And what basically this what this is saying is we we're gonna do a list genres query, and we're gonna pass in this list genres, which was auto generated for us that does this stuff. It basically runs this query command with list genres. It's gonna grab all this data for us without us having to do it all. Great. And now since we have the uh, data, we want to do something with it. So we're gonna do set genre, and then we're going to pass in all genres. You can see, nice, we have typing here, list genres, items, and that's an array of table values. And so we'll just make it so. And then of course we have to call the grab genres. And that should be enough to set genre so we can use it in our app. And if we did this right, we can add it in here. So uh, first, I like to check first, make sure if genre equal equals undefined that we just put it to null. Otherwise, we're gonna go into that items table that we just created and we can pass a few things to it. And the only thing, two things we definitely need is the table name, we're gonna call it genres, and then the data, which is genre. So if we did this correctly, it should show up. Awesome. Now I don't love how it's kind of next to it like this. I'm gonna move this down. And I think what I wanna do is add a fragment. So I'll add a fragment here. All right, now it's kind of where I want it. So now we action, if we add a new genre here, science fiction, SF, I guess we'll make that capital. And we submit, now we have science fiction action. So essentially we can do the same thing in this platforms uh, that we did here. And let me just copy and paste this into platforms, into the index. So I'm gonna be a little lazy here. So we're gonna change this to platform. I can do like a, a multiple select here, but I'm just going to do it this way. It'll be all platforms dot data dot list platforms dot items and as table values array. And this not is set genre, it should be set platform. Should we have it? Yeah, I think that's good. And now we have the, and this should be grab platforms. And I'll rename this to grab platforms. And now we should do the similar thing we did here where we're going to, at the bottom of the flex, 
But instead of this will be platform. We'll import in the items table, platform, and we'll just need to add in here. Let's see if we can get this working. Put this in, oops. All right, so it's not giving me any errors, but the table name should be platforms. Okay, let's take a look at it. All right, we don't have any platforms, so let's add one. Oh, we haven't added in the Hell World platforms new. Let's, uh, let me go ahead and add that in. So we know we have genres, and we're using this genre create form. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this as well. Once again, you, if you like to do this in production, you probably could refract this out so you're not copying and pasting it everywhere. But for this example, I will be doing that. So we'll go to the new for platforms. Here's a new one. So we're gonna do create new platform and import this. Instead of genre create form, it should be called platform create form. Create form. And then this should be closing platform create. And then we'll import the router in. And this will go to platforms. All right, so if I did that right, now this platform create form should be there. So I'll click add platform, nice. So this is like, for example, like an Xbox or PlayStation. So I'll just call it a fake name, space uh, system five, six, SS six. Click submit. Awesome, so now I have my platforms. I have my genre showing up. Now the last thing we need to do is products and add that in. So there's a couple of ways we can do this. Uh, first, we need to, well, first we need to think of, of how we're going to grab the data and display it. And we should probably just use the same thing we're doing in these two and use just a form. So I'm, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna grab, copy this, going to the platform, well, it's going to be the index for the products page, which all we have this in here now. Let's return. And I'll return right here. Get rid of this. And then we'll need to import a few things in. First, the flex. And instead of the platform create form, we're going to import in the product create form. And I'll just need to fix this. Product create form. And then after it's done, it should just go to the main route. And I think this is a little too small. So let's put this, let's, let's change this up. I'm gonna put this 100%. And I think I'm surrounded by flex. And we'll do align items center. Okay, I think that looks okay. Looks a little bit better. Uh, I'm gonna add in a little padding here. I'm gonna get rid of this flex here. Let's see what it looks like now. All right, that looks good. And now I should be able to add everything in. Now, before we jump into this too far, I do want to show one thing here. If we go back to our studio, uh, we can go into the content here and take a look at what sort of query we want. If I go to test GraphQL queries, I can come here and we do have something called list platforms. Or excuse me, a list products. And there's actually, a slight issue we're gonna run into. So if we go to items here, and we, let's say we do the name, but we wanna grab the genre ID and platform ID. We can grab these IDs, and if we run this, we don't have anything in here, but this will just give us the platform ID and name, but it doesn't necessarily give us what we want. We don't want the ID, we want the actual values from it. So we want the name and value, and there's no way the way we have this set up that we can get that. So we need a quick change to our schema to make that work. 
So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go back to the data. And I have the platform here, genre and product. I'm going to add in for the product, I'm going to add in a relationship here. And what I'm going to do is for platform, I'm going to do product belongs to platform. And this will allow us to query the product and get the platform information. So I'm going to add that in. And then I'm going to add in another relationship for genre and say product belongs to genre. And now we have these two rules where we have the IDs that we can grab, but now we can actually grab the data, the platform and genre from the product when we query it. So let me save and deploy that and I'll show you what it looks like. We'll need to do a couple updates to our app. All right, so the change is in place. We'd have to do, let's double check one thing here. Since we made that change, we'll go back into our UI library and look at our product create form. And it looks fine right here. Uh, we can always change these things too if we need to, but it looks okay to me. If we have any issues, we'll make a change. All right. Uh, one thing to realize, if you go into the product form and let's say I'm in the genre update form and I don't like to add this, this products in here, uh, I can, as long as it's not required, I can just delete it and not, and then pull it back into my app. But it looks like I'm fine right now. I'm going to come back into the product app. And since I made a change, I need to run amplify pull, amplify pull. And this will pull everything, all the changes back in. Okay, so it synced everything in, but we need to check here. If we go back into our queries that we have, and we look back at our like list genres, or maybe better would be list products right here. We can see it in here, but I don't see any change to this. So we need to regenerate this file so we have the right types. And we can do that by running amplify update cogen. And then I'll just hit enter through. Make sure you have three for the statement depth. And then I can run amplify cogen. And this should automatically update that queries file. Cool, so if now you can see it, same list uh, get product, list genres. If we go back to list products right here, now we have platform and genre, and it's already there. Now, we, I could have typed this manually, but this is so much easier. Awesome. And now if we run npm run dev, we'll come back here, and let's see if we can add something add a product. So I'm going to refresh the page. All right, so I'm going to add a new product. Uh, and this is going to be like a video game store. So I'm going to create a video game store with like cats and dog at, uh, video games. So I'm going to do a cats game. Let's assume that's the name of it. $32.99. Uh, one thing you notice right here, the image isn't correct. So I need to figure that out. Let's, let's fix that real quickly. So I'm gonna go back into studio. I'm gonna go back to the product create form. I'm gonna click configure. And I have this image here. Now, one thing I can do, I can click on it and where it says type, I'm gonna change this to storage field. And now it's gonna have a way for me to do uploads, which is awesome. So I'm gonna close this, should have saved it. Now, if I go back to the product create form, now I have this image uploader. So let me do another amplify pull. Awesome. So I should have my new component in here. And one thing, if you have problems with this step, look at the package.json. Remember at the beginning, we installed UI React storage. We have to have this installed for us to be able to use that file uploader that you saw on the previous page. So if this works, I am going back to local host 3000. Cool, so now I have a way to upload and this will be automatically connected to, this will be automatically connected to the S3 storage. And let's see if that works. So I'm gonna put a name, we're gonna call it puppy game, price 32.99. I'm gonna find a file here. I have this puppy file. You see it's uploading. Now I'm going to choose my platform, that's space system six, and it's science fiction. Make sure I click add, you have to have both these add, and then I'm going to click submit. 
And cool, so redirected here. Now I don't have anything here, but we'll look at that in a moment. But if I look here, go back to content. Oops, I need to click on product here. And now here it is. So here's my product, I have my name, I have the image name, platform, everything's good inside here. So the last step is I want this to display not just hello world, but the actually all the games. And I'll show you how I do that. All right, so I went ahead and created a new folder, a new file called products table. And I'll show you what it looks like here. So this is using all that table. It's very similar to the last table that I created. It, it takes in the product and it displays all the information. I guess I could have passed in the name of the table too, but this is fine. And I have a name, price, genre, platform, image, and data added. And everything is pretty self-explanatory. So this item, if we look inside this products, products, it's an array. And then we have, we can grab the genre, uh, name and ID, the platform, everything we need directly from this object. So I'm grabbing the name, the price, the genre name, the platform name, and then I'm using something called storage image. So once again, this is from the UI React storage. And one nice thing about this is if you have signed URLs, uh, anything like that, this will automatically grab the data for you. So I don't have to use any specific JavaScript library to do this. So I'm just grabbing it from it. I have to put in it's private, it's an image, and then I pass the item image into it. And then once again, I have the data at the bottom. So now let's see if we can add that new table to here. And guess what? We're going to copy and paste very similarly like we did before a use effect from the other uh, from another page and we're going to update it. So we're going to have product products set products. We're going to import in use state. Instead of having table values here, this will be product and import in that type. We're going to import in use effect. We're going to call this grab products. You can see here that we're doing very something very similar. This is gonna be all products, products, and then import in here. We're gonna import in this GraphQL query, which for some reason I can never automatically import in. So this should be list products query. I'll import that in. Import in the queries again which I'll just copy and paste through here. This is queries.listproducts. And then it says set genre will be set products. And this will be products. And then this will be list products. And this will be product. All right. And this should be grab products. So now we have a way to grab all the products and then we should be able to pass it in to the table that we set up. So once again, I'm gonna go to the other page and grab this, uh, I'm gonna copy and paste it in here. And this is gonna be, instead of genre, it'll be product. And this will be products, product table. Maybe it's products table. There we go. And we don't have a table name on this. And this will be products. And it will be product, products. And it's not called data, we called it products. I don't know why I changed the name. That's fine. So we'll go back to the index here. And this is not called, it's called product, products. There we go. So now we should have this table and we'll say here, list products, all products, all products. Save it. Nice. So now we can, if we refresh it here, 
Now we have the puppy game, we have the picture loading, we have all the information. So let's let's try this from start to finish. I'm going to add a genre. I'm going to add in, and that automatically gets uploaded. I'm going to add a platform, use my Neo 1. A genre, science, let's do puzzle, add it, submit. Cool, so now you can see in my all products that it automatically updated. Awesome, so I this is a lot to go over, but I think this is really shows you the power of, of Amplify Studio and everything you can do with it, how easy it was to start saving data. And, and with Studio, I can look at the content I've created, the file browser, uh, it's really powerful uh, everything you can do here. So let me know what you think. Thanks.